initially intended to show you the setup of this tent but to be honest there's a really good resource on the Lone Rider website so I'll put a link to that on the screen. This tent is really easy to put up so let's concentrate on how it's performed in the time that I've been using it and why I chose it. When it's folded up in its bag it does fit inside this side case but as you can see it's a pretty decent size. Despite being relatively low, there's plenty of room inside. You have a flap door on either side, both of which can be rolled up and they can also be attached to your bike with the awning attachment that comes in the kit as well. It's pretty much a traditional style tent. You have an inner section which clips to the frame and then an outer waterproof cover that goes over the top of that. The good thing about the frame is that it's not lots of separate parts. They're all connected together, which makes it very easy to put up and take down. And there's no fear of losing any of the crucial bits because they all come as one piece. You get everything you need inside the bag, the inner tent, the outer tent, the frame, 18 tent pegs, the awning kit, the ground sheet, and it all goes inside a waterproof bag, which also has a warning triangle on it in case you have a breakdown. So whilst it's a pretty simple tent, it has got some good features. I like it because it's compact, it's easy to put up, and it's very well made. I've had no issues with the zips or the clips or anything like that. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice piece of kit. It is more expensive than some other tents. Is there anything that I don't like about it? Well, the only one thing which I think is pretty obvious here is it's low to the ground. So if you're getting dressed or have to do anything inside here, you've got to do it sitting down. Um, you can do it. You can get dressed in a combination of sitting down and kneeling up. It's not as easy, but that's one of the price you pay for having something more compact. If you're on longer trips and going to be spending more time in the tent, then something like the Lone Rider Moto tent, where you've got space to stand up. Obviously, you can store your bike in it, but the biggest advantage of that is that you can stand up inside it. And you've got a lot more room. You've got, you know, a sleeping centre and room outside as well if you want to cook and stuff like that. So for longer term stuff, that is probably a better option. But it is bigger and heavier. That won't go into your pannier. That will need to be strapped across the back seat. I'm old and crumbly and sometimes crouching around on the floor isn't so much fun so I might look at a moto tent. This if you want to put something in the bag and you're away for one or two nights and you want something quick and easy and small is absolutely perfect. That's the tent let's move on to what I sleep on when I'm in the tent. This is probably in camping terms the best piece of kit I have ever bought. It is the Zen Bivy light bed. I struggle with some sleeping bags. I don't like mummy shaped sleeping bags. I find them really uncomfortable, a bit restrictive. So in searching around for a solution, I came across Zen Bivy, an American company, and they've got a good system. This is the mattress. This is the uh, sleeping bag essentially, but it's more like a duvet that goes over the top with a hood and bits and pieces like that. That is what your sleeping system packs down to. So yeah, probably smaller than most mattresses and sleeping bag systems. But um, let's start with the mattress. Okay, so that's your inflatable mattress. And this sack that it comes in is the inflator. Let's just move the camera so you can get a bit of a closer look. Okay, so on one corner of the mattress, you have a valve, two-way valve for inflating and deflating. If you pop the cover off, you have a small valve in here. So you need to flick that around the right way. And it says on the tab, inflate or deflate. So switch that around to inflate with the prong sticking out. And then on the bottom of your sack, pop that open. push it over the top and then it is a case of filling this bag up with air and then you go through the process of blowing it up. So 
So there you go, that is it now inflated. You can see how big it is. They come in different sizes. This is 25 by 77. But it's not just a cheap hollow air mattress. It does have 180 grams of baffled insulation in it, which means it's not only warm, it's also quiet. No crinkly crisp packet type stuff and it's lightweight too. It's got a nice kind of spring to it. I struggle with air mattresses because I never find them that comfortable. This was an absolute revelation and I'll show you why in a minute. But once that's inflated, it's time to get the base cover for this out of the bag as well as the top cover. So let's put that together. There are compression straps on this bag so you can get it down nice and tight, get all the air out of it. It is a down bag. I'll put all the specs on the screen. Okay, so that is your pillow. First things first before we get the sleeping bag out is this, which is essentially a cover for the base. So yeah. Get the shoulders on there, that gets the base in place. And then there's a strap on the back, which is adjustable just to hold it into place. So that is the base of your bed. That's effectively the inner lower part of your sleeping bag. You've got a hood section, which is nicely quilted. And then you see there's little tabs on the side here, which you probably can't see, let's get a bit closer. So there's little tabs all the way along and that's how you fasten the top bit on. So let's get that bit out. If you get this out, give it a shake. Get some air into it to fill it out. This is the light bed. This is the large quilt. Again, these come in different sizes and this is good to 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And essentially, for people like me who don't like mummy sleeping bags, this just goes over the top and then hooks in with all the little hooks. So if we start at the bottom, they're colour cord as well, so there's a green hook which goes onto the green tab. Another green hook onto the green tab. Yeah. Yellow onto yellow. So you go around hooking all of those on. So once that's all then hooked in, you have your sleep system ready to go. Nice and loose, if you want to, you can stick your leg out of the gap at the sides, but it kind of envelopes you. Actually, I'll take my boots off and I'll get inside it while I talk about it. Uh, but I used this in Germany and some of the guys were complaining it was a bit cold overnight and a few of the guys were complaining that they were getting cold and uh, I'm sleeping in this in a pair of shorts. Uh, it was fantastic. So there you go. You just slide yourself in. You've got the option to do up extra tabs here if you want it. You want that extra so you can kind of really close it up like this. If you get hot, obviously you can peel bits back. If you want to, you can stick your foot out the side to get some air to it or you can just tuck it all inside, but it's kind of not restrictive, it's not tight on you. Turning over in bed sometimes, the whole sleeping bag goes with you, whereas this, you can just turn around. I must say, it is one of, if not the most comfortable sleeping bag I've ever used. The air mattress is lovely. I had some really good night's sleep in this. It is a little bit more expensive than some of the others, but it's really, really good. And I forgot to show you, I think I put it in the bag, but you've also got a small inflatable pillow that you could have. It blows up the same with the sack that you use. Pop that in there and there you go. And in case you're wondering, it fits perfectly in the Lone Rider ADV tent. It's a fantastic combination. Really, really lovely. Really like this a lot. I'm off to Ireland soon and it might be the sort of thing that I'll put in there just in case, you know, I'm staying in an eco lodge and if I don't like the... Uh, the sheets or something like that, you can pull this out and you've got a super comfortable sleep system. So this is the Zembi V light mattress. Brilliant piece of kit, really glad I invested in this. But what else will you need when you're camping? Well, you probably need something to sit on. 
Okay, so tents up, beds in. But I'm not ready to go to bed yet, so I want somewhere to have a sit down. You need a camping chair. There's tons and tons out there on the market. Some incredibly expensive ones, some of them going for you know, well over 200 pounds, down to various other bits and pieces. This is a Quechua, never know how you pronounce that, from uh, Decathlon. This is the Low Chair 500L. About 30 pounds, packs down pretty small, it's pretty light. The important thing is it's pretty strong as well. It will take a 110 kilo person. And I also like the fact that again, it's very simple to set up. You just unfold it, snap all the legs together, tent style. And this bit slides open like that. base of the seat on. And that's it. Super sturdy, super comfortable, gets you off the ground not too low that you sat right down on the ground and struggled to get out of it but by the same token it's not too high uh, it's got reasonably wide rubber feet on the bottom so it's not going to dig into the ground unless the ground is particularly soft in which case you probably want to get some discs to put on there but yeah for the money it's been absolutely amazing I'll put a link to everything down in the description looks good doesn't take up a lot of room cheap comfortable nice mesh sides easy okay so i've got my chair i might want to make myself a cup of tea what do i do about cooking that's why i get the trusty jet boil again many of you would have seen these jet boils this is just a gas cooker this is the uh, minimo which i've had for quite a few years now and again, I'm not going to go through the ins and out of this because I have got another video of that and I'll put a link up in the top there. But it's a self-contained unit. So if you take the lid off, you have in the top of the lid a plastic stand. And inside, if you choose the right bottle, you can get your gas canister. This is a, what's the size of this? But it's the smallest one, but that goes in there with the burner. So you can pop that into the stand. He says, yeah, pop that into the stand. Take that lid off. This bit then screws into the top. There we go. You take the plastic bit off the bottom there. That just fits in there. And you've got a little gas controller on the side here, so you can control how much the gas flow is. And there is a little start button somewhere on the side here. There we go, gas is moving. Boom. And this boils water really quickly. I won't obviously do that now because I haven't got any water here to boil. But again, it's a great system because everything is self-contained. You can use that as a little eating bowl or a cup. And I just love the way that everything fits in on itself. And they do lots of bits for this. You can get, um, you know, uh, coffee makers and French presses and all sorts of bits and pieces. But again, a really great piece of kit. Not hideously expensive, but it just works. For drinking materials, I just use a collapsible cup. This is a Yuko hard plastic with a handle at the top. Soft rubber bit in the bottom. Folds down relatively flat. You can get the ones that collapse right down, uh, but I like the fact that this has got a little bit of substance to it. So if you want to hold that, you're not trying to hold a, a roasting hot piece of silicon. Um, 
yeah, again, links to these will be down at the bottom if you want to go and have a look at them. I've not been paid to make any of these. This is all stuff that I've been researching and found to use and um, it's worked really well for me. Another thing that I found really useful is this little light. So it's just like a little torch, um, which is solar powered so you can leave it out to charge it up. But what I also like about that is it opens up and you can use it as a lantern inside your tent. So you can hang that up inside your tent and then you've got a really nice piece of light. Solar charges or you can charge it with the USB. Again, not very much, I think about 20 quid. Packs down really light, really useful piece of kit. And then finally, one other thing I picked up, which I take everywhere with me when I'm camping, is this. It's a KTM branded, because I bought this at the Moto Hall when I needed one, but it is a little travel towel. Packs down really small and neat. It's got an odd feel to it, but it really dries you. Uh, it's quite amazing, really, when you compare this to sort of a big bar sheet you have at home. This works really well, kind of seems to soak up loads of water. You can wring it out, really handy sort of camping towel. And uh, those sort of things take up loads of room. If you're taking normal towels with you, they just take up so much space, difficult to, to dry out once you've used them. And this is, has just been fantastic. Works really well, dries out really quickly. I bought this from the KTM shop and it wasn't cheap because it's KTM. I think it was probably about 25, 30 euros. Um, but at the time when I got there, it was absolutely heaming it down with rain uh, and I needed something to sort of dry myself off on the bike and this was the solution. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. Uh, it was just a quick run through. As I say, a few people have asked me about it. Um, I'm not trying to advertise these things. These are all stuff that I've used. They're all stuff that I researched beforehand. They've worked really well and I like the fact that they're pretty small and compact and can pack down into that pannier. Um, Apologies, the weather's been off and on, so the light's been in and out, which um, was affecting some of the, the footage, I hope not too much. And then now is a massive black cloud over there. So I'm gonna say goodbye and race to get this stuff packed away before that rain comes down. So if you've got any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll leave links to all the products down there. If you like the channel, hit and subscribe would be gratefully appreciated. And until next time, Take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye. I didn't quite make it in time, so I'm sheltering in the tent and putting the sleep system on that away until this uh, thunderstorm passes over. <laughs>